What up peeps? Today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step method on how you can get your LinkedIn profile set up and how you can design your LinkedIn profile so that you could have the right kind of attention from the right kind of people and give yourself the right kind of opportunities. So it'll be a three-part uh, process. One, getting your LinkedIn made. Second, um, an overview of some of the key pages. And then third, actually getting your LinkedIn profile set. And I'll go over tips and tricks and actually show you by um, making an account myself on the screen. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you like it, please like, comment, uh, be sure to you know subscribe so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Let's get started. All right, now that we're on our browser, we're gonna go ahead and search for LinkedIn. Now go ahead and select the LinkedIn and it'll prompt you to a welcome page. And it does ask you a few questions which will walk you through. Today, we're just gonna go ahead and click join now and get right to the point. Now, I created an email address just for this, assuming that I am a college student named Hika Tube. Once you enter your email, go ahead and enter a password and it'll prompt you to the next page where you'll enter your first and last name. Now, my first name is Hika, last name is Tube. And then you finally enter the zip code and the area you're in. And for my case, it automatically set the zip code of the cafe I was working at. Next, you're going to go ahead and it'll ask if you have a current job title. Now, if you don't, you can click the I am a student. Now, let's say I am an intern currently working at company ABC. I can go ahead and write that and it'll give me an option to choose from the different types of job or employment that I'm currently under. If you're full time, you can enter full time. If you have a part time job, you can do that, too. Maybe you're self-employed and you own your own little business. Or perhaps a freelancer or maybe you have a contract. And again, a more popular one is internship or perhaps an apprenticeship. Whatever it is, you can go ahead and choose what you want. And maybe if you do have a job right now that you are currently holding, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and enter the position and the employment type. In this case, let's just select internship. Finally, we're going to enter the name of the company. And if it doesn't come up on the drop down, you could always just select outside the box and it'll enter in. Now, if you're a student without a job, you can go ahead and select the I'm a student, and as you're seeing now, enter the college that you're currently attending, the year you started, and the year you're expected to graduate. And just make sure you are over 16. Okay, great. Let's click continue. Now, a confirmation code was sent to your email address, so let's go ahead and check that. All right, now that we are in our email, you'll notice that LinkedIn has sent you the six-digit code. If it doesn't, give it a few minutes and hopefully you'll find this in your inbox. Now, usually I'll never show this, but since this email was created just for this video, we're good to go. And P.S. Please don't email here because I will not check. Now, we're going to go ahead and enter our six digit code into our email, and this will prompt you to the next page. Now, if you're looking for a new job, you can click yes. In this case, we're going to go ahead and click not now, and you can always change this later. LinkedIn will also ask if you want to sync your email contacts with your LinkedIn account. Since I don't have anyone in my contacts, I'm going to go ahead and skip this, which is available. A great way to express yourself is to add a profile picture. Now, I'm going to show you this in the actual creating section, so you can always skip, but you can do it in this step too. And of course, LinkedIn will ask if you want to download the app. You can scan the URL or take the link or text the link. Let's skip this for now, but it is pretty useful. Finally, LinkedIn will ask if you want to follow a specific organization, some famous CEOs and whatnot. When you skip all, I've noticed that it'll just automatically follow LinkedIn use. Okay, now this is what your homepage looks like. Now I'll go through each of the upper tabs, but let's see what it looks like here on the main homepage. Whoever you follow or are connected with, whether it's an organization, a community, a specific company, or CEO, special expert, any business professionals, you'll see this here like you would in any other Facebook or Instagram page. You can also add a post here and add things like photos, videos, set up events, and whatnot. Now, we'll have another tutorial on this and the searches, but let's just take a quick look on what LinkedIn looks like. On the network part, you can go ahead and search network. It'll also recommend certain networks. And as you include things in your profile, it'll recommend you to people in the same company, maybe people from the same college, 
We'll go over this next time. Another one is the jobs. The jobs here, you can go ahead and search for jobs, save jobs, look up salaries. And there are a lot of cool features on here. All right, great. We'll go over this in another video sometime. Another one is messages. Here, you can look at the messages sent to you, start group messages within you and a few other professionals or you and a few other companies. And you'll be able to see the messages here, very similar to other social medias. And finally, you have a notification. Here, if there's any notifications, it'll ping you here. All right, now we are in our profile. So let's get this started. All right, so first let's start by adding our profile picture. If you click the camera and click upload, you can go ahead and upload most pictures such as JPG and PNG formats. Now you can adjust it here and make some tweaks like turning or zooming in. And definitely take this chance to, while keeping it professional, making this as an opportunity to express yourself so that recruiters and companies and anyone else who wants to connect with you will know what you're about. Um, you can also add watermarks, coloring, and make some appropriate changes, as well as set visibilities so that you can tweak who can see this profile picture. Maybe you just want to keep it within someone in the same connection or just someone with a LinkedIn account and not just total strangers who Google your name. So as you see here, you can select it. I've just set it to anyone. And so we're going to go ahead and upload this photo. Now, as you can see, the photo has now been added. And if you look down, some of the key components have already been added beforehand since we already added this in the initial setup phase. Now, if you go to the add profile section, these are initially what you see as the core or the key factors that you want to add that most people are interested in seeing about you. Now, other than this, you can go to more and add other areas or other recommended things. So you can add some of these other components you see here, especially if it stands out or if it's something that's very important in your industry or the role that you're applying to. For example, if you're in the tech industry and you have a software coding certification such as Java, SQL, Python, C++, it's definitely a plus and a strength to add that so that it shows your expertise in the criteria that you're applying for or something that shows a little more about your background. So here, as you can see, are many of the other factors you can add color to your profile. Today, we'll keep it simple, but don't worry. I'll go over tips on how you can write these core areas. So let's start with the about. Now, as you can see here, LinkedIn gives you a little instruction on what is the best practice to write in the about section. This is pretty much what everyone sees. When they go on your profile, the first thing that comes to mind is about. So we want to limit to two things, the who and the what. Who are you? Who are you? And yes, I understand maybe you're someone's kid. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you're a mother. And that's fine. But here, we're going to keep it professional. Maybe you're a student. Majoring in what? Software engineering? Marketing? Finance? What are you? Who are you? And what are you looking for? What do you want to relay? What is the key message you want? And that's what you'll write in the what. We're going to go ahead and write an example. But as you can see, the what is what are you looking for? Are you looking for a job? Are you looking for an internship? If so, where? What do you want them to know? Who you are and what do you want them to know? What is the key message here? That is the thing you want to write in the about section. And this is, again, I repeat myself over and over, but this is where they'll look at first and foremost. And if a company is looking for a person who is of a certain degree or certain background, and it's not in your about section, even though you do happen to fit that criteria, they may just pass away. So go ahead and make sure you write it. And here is an example, and I'll keep this in our test or tutorial profile so that you can always reference this. And the link will be in the description. So be sure to check out Hikatube and you can always reference Hikatube and look at what you need to write on the about as well as the other components. But here's an example. Let's say I'm a software engineer major with three years of experience of coding in the specific languages or coding languages, Java, C++, and Python. That's the who. As for the what, I can say I am looking for an internship, an engineering internship. In fact, I'm looking for a software engineering internship. In this type of company, this type of industry, the more specific, the better. But you don't want to keep it too niche as well, because that way you might miss out on good opportunities by making it too descriptive. And companies will say, oh, shucks, this person does not 
want what we have to offer. So add some color to it, but don't make it aggressively niche or too descriptive. It, I know it's a tough balance, but I believe you can do it. And definitely check out these examples and reference it. So as you can see here, edit about, you can always write who and what. So again, what do you write in the about? Exactly, the who you are and what you're looking for, or initially the key message. Are you looking for something? Are you looking to hire somebody? Are you looking for an internship, an apprenticeship, a part-time, a full-time? We're gonna go ahead and click save. And you'll notice that if you go down, as you can see, the about is one of the first things that come up. Now, I understand the analytics and resources you see on your profile, but people who check out other individuals' profile will not see this. So this will be the first thing. Also keep in mind, the reason why I limit to who and the what is because as you saw earlier, it'll only show the first few lines. So you don't want to have a three-page paragraph about who you are because unless they expand more, they won't see much. Now, the banner is also another interesting way you can express yourself. And here, you can find other default banners, a lot of them in fact, that LinkedIn has to offer. If you have a good one that you want to add, you can always use your own images too. Now, we're going to skip this for now and continue with the core. Another thing you can add is add a position, whether it's a past position or a current position, anything that adds color to what your professional experience is, I would definitely add in LinkedIn especially if it's relevant or a stepping stone to what you are looking for. Now, here you're going to go ahead and write the title of your job or position, and it doesn't have to be a full-time job. You can write internship, you can write apprenticeship, you can write part-time, you can write contractor, you can write seasonal during the Christmas holidays, whatever it is, go ahead and write your title here. Got it? Great. Then you'll select what type of employment it is, and as I said earlier, there are a lot of options that you can choose. Finally, you'll want to add your company, which whatever company you worked for, and the location where you worked. Now, if it's a remote, I've tried it, and you can actually write remote, and it'll save it for you. So that's very helpful. Now, if you currently work the position, you can check the checkbox. But if it's a past position, you can uncheck it. We're going to go ahead and uncheck it just to show you what it is like. But pretty much, they'll ask you for the start year and start month. And you just go ahead and input that. So we're going to add the month and the year and call it an internship. Next, you'll see the description box, that description box, yikes, description box that comes up. Here, we're gonna have to write some of the things we did. Usually, there are different formats, and I don't think there's one correct answer. Again, every recruiter has his or her preferences too. Usually, what I like to do is write an overview, meaning software engineer intern at ABC Corp or HECA Corp. And then, I just wanna add three things. The results, the what, and the how. What did I achieve, which is the results, meaning I sold a million dollars, or I fixed ABC bugs or ABC problems. I generated ABC revenue, new clientele. What was the results achieved? And so as you can see here, I added some results here. And you also want to add the what. What did you do and how did you do it, right? You did this through root cause analysis. Maybe you did it through engaging with X amount of clients. And the key point here is make sure you add numbers. You don't want to say a lot. You don't want to add ambiguity. Adding numbers add a little bit of color as to how much work you did. It adds quantity. It adds measurable. Did you engage with one person on a weekly basis? Did you engage with 30 people on a bi-weekly basis? If you don't write that, and both people have just engaged with clients, it doesn't show much color. And it's okay if you just engaged with one client on a weekly basis, because perhaps maybe your revenue is a million dollars over the course of the quarter, while the other person who was engaging with all those clients, their revenue is 500,000, which is only half of what you generated. So again, make sure you add numbers in ways, not too manipulative, but shows how much work you've done, both in terms of quantity and quality. And you can also add frequency as another factor. So I'll be sure to keep this overview profile with a little more color and description so you can reference it, but you can always add this and make sure you add measurables and be sure to write the results, the what, and the how. <clears throat> All right. So again, in the description portion, make sure you do have the overview, a result, what, and how. Be sure to add color 
be sure to add measurables, be sure to add some detail, you know, just so that the recruiters and companies know um, what you were able to do. So here you have the results in the sample below, I've highlighted it. And you can see the what, which is, you know, what, what I did. And finally, how you did it. And sometimes the what and the how can be combined together just to keep it simple. I've broken it down separately, but again, just make sure you have the results in the what slash how. Finally, you want to add some skills and LinkedIn will add suggested skills or you can add your own skill that relates to the job or internship or any other experience, professional experience you may have. And this is important because this is very similar to tagging or hashtags. And a lot of times recruiter will search jobs based on these tags and skills. Individuals with skills, hashtag this, this, this. In this case, Python, C++, Java. Finally, you can add media and add your company, or maybe you can add your LinkedIn pro or excuse me, Instagram profile, you know, that you were running to show that it did indeed grow to 100K followers. Now you can see that the experience portion has been added into the LinkedIn. And if you click learn more, it'll show you what you know what you are, who you are, more in detail for the recruiters to see. I'll add more details here. So if you check out the Hikatu profile, you'll be able to go ahead and see what you need to do. And I'll have my notes here for you. Okay, on to the education section. So some of the areas are already auto-filled during our initial setup, but we can always go ahead and we want to add a little bit more color. So enter some of the other areas in the field. For the degree, you want to write the degree type, associates, bachelors, or maybe a master's and doctors. And in the field of study, you'll want to enter your major. You also want to know and make sure you add the start and the end date, both month and year. And if you haven't graduated yet, go ahead and enter in future year at the projected time. Grade will be out of a 4.0 scale. And if you have a better grade in your major, then you can always do that and write that you've wrote your grade major or your major in the grade area of study. Next, you want to add a volunteer or any kind of extracurricular activities. And this can be a lot of different things. Here, we're going to show you an example. A lot of people tend to just write volunteer at ABC. But as you can see in the second line, weekly volunteer at a middle school. That shows more color. And you can even do one better by saying weekly programming tutor. Now they know what specific field of study you are committed to and what exactly you were tutoring the children at, as well as the fact that you were tutoring X amount of students. This shows more color, this shows more context, and people now understand, okay, this student went out of his way or her way to tutor this many students in this specific field of study. And not only that, it resulted in this. For example, maybe the kids received a scholarship to a programming camp thanks to your hard work and diligence in teaching them the basics of table architecture or of coding. Whatever it is, if you have any great results that led to that, be sure to write it. And this is a great place you can write what other thing you were doing, how you were spending your time, how you're different than the other areas and other candidates, and how, how you committed to making a difference, really, you know, during your areas of schooling. And it can be fine if you didn't. Maybe you were busy working, then add another position. Maybe you were busy taking care of your parents. Then go ahead and write something like that in another section. Maybe you just write caretaker or something that provides more color. It is up to you to sp on how you spend your time, both in terms of quantity, quality, but if you did, go ahead and add that to the LinkedIn. It shows who you are as a professional and also as a person. Finally, the description, you can go ahead and write an overview of who you are and what you're looking for. Or, I mean, my two cents, it kind of doubles down, so you could always leave it blank. But here, yeah, go ahead, you know, write a message, write, write a description, overview of who you are, you know, and what you're studying maybe, or, you know, what you're interested in, what, here you are, and then media, if you want to add your school or, you know, club, go ahead and do that. So now you can notice that we'll go back and in our main profile, you'll see that the education portion has a lot more color on who you are and about you. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more color and description here. So when you check out the account, you could have a little more help. Finally, you can Let's add more skills here. Any relevant skills that you want them to note, 
especially skills that relate to a job or internship that you are looking for. If you're looking for a software programming internship, be sure to write that down and you can write how you gained that skill by clicking the check. Now once you did, you can go ahead to the bottom and you'll notice that the same skill has been added right here. This skill again, I have to reiterate, is very important because when recruiters search for a job and search for candidates, they will search by certain specific fields and filter it out. So be sure, be sure to add this. And this is an overview of the core components of LinkedIn profiles. All right, peeps, that's it for today. So I really hope you found this helpful. For me, myself, um, I had a great family, but I, none of my parents or you know relatives knew how to make a LinkedIn. You know, I'm an immigrant kid, um, came from nothing. But fortunately, I had some good people in my life that helped me, and I was able to, you know, with the help of Google, shout out to Google, um, get you know uh, some good info from googling things in Forbes magazine or you know Wall Street Journal, Economist, and so on. Um, yeah, it, it, LinkedIn it was a great tool for me, uh, connecting me with some, some awesome business professionals and giving me some great business uh, opportunities, you know, just in terms of my individual career as well as connecting with some, some really amazing people. So, um, you know, I hope this helps you uh, in, in providing you with the right opportunity you deserve. And, you know, if you have any other tips or tricks, be sure to um, write that in the comments so that we can grow together and learn together and inspire each other. Um, so yeah, I hope you learned something new today. Uh, let's learn something new together always. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Wow.